Jaya Kunja Bihaji Jaya Dada Mahara Jaya Kunja Bihaji Kopi Jana Bahaba Giva Dishaji Kopi Jana Bahaba Giva Dishaji
Three more no daim more da su. Three more da no daim more da su. Padeshu sarva bhutani. Padeshu sarva bhutani. Pum sastiti pado vidu. Pum sastiti pado vidu. Amritam shemam abhayam. Amritam shemam abhayam. Three more no daim. Padeshu Sava Bhutani, Padeshu Sava Bhutani, Hum Sastiti Padovidu, Hum Sastiti Padovidu, Amritam Sheman Avayam, Amritam Sheman Avayam, Three Murdna Dai Murdesu, Three Murdao Dai Murdesu. Padeshu Sarva Bhutani Padeshu Sarva Bhutani Um Sam Sriti Padovidu Um Sastiti Padovidu Amritam Kesham Avyam Amritam Kesham Avyam Tri Murdhnao Dai Murdhasu Tri Murdhnao Dai Murdhasu Padeshu Sarva Bhutani Padeshu Sarva Bhutani Um Shastiti Padoviru Um Shastiti Padoviru Amritam Shesham Abhayam Amritam Shesham Abhayam Trimudno Dai Murdeshu Trimudno Dai Murdeshu Padeshu Sarva Bhutani Padeshu Sarva Bhutani Pum Sastiti Padovidu Pum Sastiti Padovidu Amritam Shema Mapyam Amritam Shema Mapyam Tri Murda No Dahi Murdasu Tri Murda No Dahi Murdasu Okay, so the word for word is Padeshu In the one-fourth in the one fourth. Sarva, Sarva all. all. Bhutani, Bhutani living entities. Kumsa of a supreme person. Stiti Sti Pada, Sti Pada the reservoir of all material opulence. Vidu you, you should know. Amritam, Amritam, deathlessness, Shemam, all happiness, all happiness, free from the anxiety of old age, diseases, etc. From the anxieties of old age, diseases, etc., etc., etc. Abayam, fearlessness, three murna, Beyond the three higher planetary systems. Beyond the three higher planetary systems. Ad, see, Adhai, Adhai exist. Exist. Murdasu, Murdasu. Beyond the material coverings. Beyond the material coverings. So the translation is the Supreme Personality of God it is to be known as the Supreme Reservoir of all material opulences by the one fourth by the one-fourth of his energy in which all the living entities exist. Deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from the anxieties of old age and disease exist in the kingdom of God, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems and beyond the material coverings. So uh, we can repeat it in a second. I was just, for some reason, I just popped in my head this, I, you know, the thing with the one-fourth so you know, maybe you've heard this story before, but you know the original cover of I think it's the first canon probably still has it. You see the spiritual sky, and then down here you see this the material energy. It's one fourth of the spiritual sky. So I think it was Hari Griva and and you know maybe Umapati, somebody like that. Did you hear this story before? They're they're looking at that picture on the cover. And they're thinking, what is that place right there? That place looks really cool. I'd like to go there. So then they asked Prabhupada what it was, and he says, that's where we are. That's the material universe. 
So they were attracted to the material universe. And I have that copy of the Bible. Yeah. Pictures. So they, oh yeah, that place looks really good. Let's go there. They were already there. <laughs> they were already there. there. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was so great. You were there. Don't worry, your wish has already been fulfilled. The Supreme Personality of Godhead. Repeat, please. Supreme, Supreme Personality, Personality of Godhead is to be known as the Supreme Reservoir of all material opulences by the one-fourth of His energy in which all the living entities exist. Deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from the anxieties Deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from the anxieties of old age and disease, of old age and disease exist in the kingdom of God, exist in the kingdom of God, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems, and beyond the material coverings. Beyond the material coverings. Uh, so, purport by its divine grace, is the Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. One of the total manifestations of the Sandini energy of the Lord, one fourth is displayed in the material world, and three fourths are displayed in the spiritual world. The, the Lord's energy is divided into three omnipotent parts, namely Sandini, Samvit, and Halandini. In other words, he is the full manifestation of existence, knowledge, and bliss. In the material world, such a sense of existence, knowledge, and pleasure is meagerly exhibited, and all living entities, who are minute parts and parcels of the Lord, are eligible to relish such consciousness of existence, knowledge, and bliss very minutely in the liberated stage. Whereas, in the conditioned stage of material existence, they can hardly appreciate what is factual, um, exist, uh, existential, uh, cog cognizable, and pure happiness of life. The liberated souls, who exist in far greater numerical strength than these souls in the material world, can factually experience the potency of the above-mentioned Sadini, Samvit, and Halandini energies of the Lord in the matter of deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from old age and disease. Um, in the material world, the planetary systems are arranged in three spheres called Triloka, or Svarga, Marcha, and Patala, and all of them constitute only one fourth of the total Sadini energy. Beyond that is the spiritual sky, where the Vaikuntha planets exist beyond the coverings of even the coverings seven let me, let me get right. beyond the coverings of material strata. In the in none of the in none of the triloka planetary systems can one experience the status of immortality full knowledge and full bliss. The upper planetary systems are called sattvika planets because they provide facilities for a long duration of life and relative freedom from disease and old age, as well as a sense of fearlessness. The great sages and saints are promoted beyond the heavenly planets in Maharloka, but that also is not the place of complete fearlessness because at the end of one kalpa the maharloka is annihilated and the inhabitants have to transport themselves to still higher planets. Yet even on these planets no one is immune to death. There may be a comparative ex extension of life, expansion of knowledge, and a sense of full bliss but, fact, but factual deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from old age, diseases, etc., are possibly only beyond the material spheres of the coverings of the material sky. Such things are situated on the head. Such things are situated 
on the head. Adhai mor da su. I don't know what that last sentence means. Uh, they're situated on the head. Anyway, so the translation again is uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is to be known as the supreme reservoir of all material opulences by the one fourth of his energy uh, in which all the living entities exist. Deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from the anxieties of old age and disease exist in the kingdom of God, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems and beyond the material coverings. So I, I remember Kirtananda uh, used to always give her, used to use this example all the time that if you have a choice between living in a place where there's no death, there's no anxiety, there's no war, there's no taxes, uh, and uh, then on the other hand you have a place which is filled with anxiety, everyone dies, everyone grows old, gets diseases, you're being taxed even when you die, <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a tax on everything, especially in a place like England. Um, so, but, uh, he would say, who, who, which would you choose? I mean, is, it, is there any choice? Is there, is, would there be any choice? Speaking of taxes, I was going to just say that in England, I remember the first time I was in England, I was um, in a taxi, and I thought this was sort of some kind of Monty Python humor, <laughs> but um, there was a billboard saying, make sure you've paid your TV tax, because the... Uh, the monitors the, that are patrolling your neighborhoods. And I'm going, really? Oh, that's funny. Ah, you British are really... The guy said, no, it's true. I said, yeah. I said what? He said, yeah, if you don't pay a tax you know, to watch TV in your house, they'll know that you're watching it and then you'll get a citation. <laughs> I said, are you kidding? <laughs> he said, yeah, you see, and this radio right here in my taxi cab? He said, I have to pay a tax to play. Huh? If I play music for you, I'm entertaining you, mm -hmm. and that's taxable. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. So, that was back in the... Uh, that, this was the 80s. the 80s. Well, <coughs> they have health insurance for everyone. So that's, the thing is, is that, you know, I was going to say, and I don't want to get off into a whole political mm -hmm. thing, I'm sorry, but it just dawned on my mind, that, um, that uh, he... Uh, I always say that, you know, I lived up in Canada and I really thought the health, it wasn't perfect, but their health insurance is first class. I mean, it, you know, Colleen had cancer and we didn't have any anxiety about it. You know, it was like $25 a month or something. Not, so at one point we weren't paying anything. And um, so I, I would always say that I didn't mind paying the taxes because I knew what I was getting for it. You got all this, and if you lose your job, there's no stigma to it. You know, you, mm -hmm. you lose your job and you get six months automatically UI, unemployment insurance. They don't, they don't give you a hard time, but you do have to go out and try to find a job. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, there's a, there's a, and I often thought it should be, should be called compassionate capitalism rather than socialism because, mm. you know, the way we, that word has been mm. abused. Because what do we have? We, you know, Benjamin Franklin then was a socialist because he, he started the, the postal service. Mm -hmm. You know, the postal service, public, he also started public libraries. And they were big, rich capitalists who saw that the common folks should be more, have the same opportunities. One president, the president who, um, I'm going off in the wrong direction here. <laughs> no, I've already got finished this one thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 who am I looking at? Is that Gore Corona? I do well. Okay. Because you can't see, you just see the form. You know, um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, it was the one that did, when the stock market crashed, that was Hoover. And he was a big uh, capitalist. And he says, I love capitalism. I, it's the capitalist I hate. <laughs>
because he really thought, because people were expecting like the World War I vets were expecting some assistance and, he, and when people lost their jobs they wanted the government to come in and provide soup, uh, um, you know, soup, what do you call them? Kitchens, soup kitchens, yeah. uh, but you know, and the, and the churches <coughs> stepped up. But he kept thinking that the capitalists themselves, the very successful ones, um, and you know, they still were coming out of the Robert Barron era, the late 1800s. There were some very wealthy men, and he thought that they would step up and help, help, and they never did. You know, because greed is, you know. Um, it's a disease, and you can never, uh, you know, it's never enough. You, you never have enough. Anyway, I, that's not what I want to talk about. I'm sorry, I got the little bit. Um, I don't really know. What is it? But uh, I heard this one story, though. This is another nice little story. Um, uh, this is going to be stream of consciousness today. Uh, I heard this story. It was a, a story I've heard probably say in the early 70s, though. Um, there was a man giving a, a, a Shima Bhagavatam reciter. He's reciting the Bhagavatam. Mm. And uh, uh, there was a thief in the in the uh, in the in the peop in the congregation listening to the Shima Bhagavatam. And uh, the, it, there was a description of how Mother Jasoda would dress Krishna opulently yeah. with very valuable necklaces and jewelry. And uh, to go out when she, he was tending the cows with his friends, and uh, this thief thought, "Wow, if I could, you know, go and get to Vrindavan and then see Krishna, I could uh, steal that jewelry, and I'd be a million times, many times over." So he actually asked the reciter, and he said, "You can't, you can't do that. I mean, you have to be qualified." So, well, how do I get qualified? You have to be constantly meditating on Krishna. And, um, and praying to him and glorifying him. So he did. He kept glorifying how, how opulently Krishna was dressed with his jewelry and he kept thinking about how, oh please Krishna let me come and see you like, <laughs> so I can get your jewelry. And he was actually thinking like this and finally he ends up in Vrindavan by meditating on Vrindavan. I want to go to Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. I want to go. He finally gets there. And then he says, I want to see Krishna. I want to be in. He sees Krishna. And then he goes up to Krishna and he says, I want to steal your jewelry. And he goes, no, you can't do that. <laughs> and so, so then the man says, oh, please, but then I'll, okay, well. Anyway, so then, and the way he said it was so sweetly kind of, all right. But he just thought, if I hang around long enough, I'll see my chance. And, and, but he just kept associating with Krishna and meditating on Krishna and thinking how to get that jewelry and looking at the jewelry and then looking at the body of the Lord. And he realized that the body of the Lord was maybe more beautiful than the jewelry. And that... He made the jewelry look beautiful. And finally, he became so purified that Krishna says, Okay, you can have my jewelry. And he says, No, I just want, I want your association. So in this way, Prabhupada's saying that sometimes we don't always come with the right motives. Uh, we may have other motives. But bhakti yoga is so powerful. Uh, it can purify even the wrong motives. I mean, bhakti yoga tinged by karma yoga, bhakti yoga tinged by jnana yoga, we want knowledge, you know, things like that. Um, but so, but the ultimate goal is pure bhakti. And you cannot, like, I heard someone say recently that the doors of hell are very wide. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, and you can come into the doors of hell with any qual bad qualities, any desires, greed, lust, envy, you know, all of the bad qualities, you can enter hell. But the, go the, 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 the gates to Vaikuntha is very, very thick. It's only wide enough for one ten thousandth the tip of the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Pure devotion. You can have no bad qualities. None. And so, this is... Uh, I heard because I heard this actually it was a devotee talking about how when he first joined he had this one uh, he, it took him a long time to finally surrender in the, in the early 70s and, but he had this one he was a brahmachari and he liked to go out on Sankirtan and he had, but he had this one vice that he could not give up and it was um, there was one cassette of a, a band and he 
every now and then he just he rationalized that the lyrics are kind of good and he had like a little Walkman and he, every now and then he had to just take shelter and go listen to that to that band. You want to know what the band is? No. We don't need no education. Drinks what? You know, they had some good lyrics. <laughs> so he would take shelter. So then, not so on top of that, when he would go out, when they would go out on Harinam in London, he, he talked about how they would march down this long street up to the arch and they'd march back. And he was passing out magazines and he'd always want to just, um, he'd follow behind. And uh, he wanted to, he, he you know, he, he would uh, utilize this as, as an opportunity to stop in front of a music store. You know, in those days they still had music stores. So they were always playing really good rock, you know. And that was his one attachment, was listening to rock and roll. So, and he was going out, and I, actually, if you think about it, it probably wasn't a bad place to distribute magazines. Mm -hmm. Probably, they get young people, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So, he stops in front of, uh, he stops, and he's doing this, he's doing this for a long time. And he thinks nobody's picking up on him, but Krishna does. <laughs> so, one day, he's standing there, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, the, the, the music that's coming out is Govindam Hare Pujam Tamahamaja So he immediately knew at that moment that Krishna was talking to him and he ran back uh, to the to his locker where he had that one cassette tape and threw it in the trash and never looked back at it again so yeah, you know, these are the kinds of uh, things that we have to be aware of in our own. Sometimes they're much more subtle, and, subtle, and we don't even, we, you know. I always pray for uh, that I can see myself as others see me, because I don't understand how people uh, see. And, and you know, it depends. You know, like I may be observing someone, and I'm seeing them through a lens that's not necessarily accurate or pure. I'm projecting something onto them that isn't true. And, um, like, it just, we had a little incident just now where, you know, there was a misunderstanding, uh, where, where someone was thinking they were being accused of something, and it was just a, it was, anyway, it was just like that kind of a thing. So we don't always see ourselves as others see us, and, we, and but the real other we have to care about is how to super soul see us. There's no time that he, he knows everything. It's not, you can't go anywhere. You can't hide. He sees everything. And what do we have in, in, in what is it that we have in, um, did I read the right purport in verse today? Hmm. I forgot. 2, 6, 19. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so here it is, is that we, and again, yeah, and so now what, all right, so the point is, is that we've just been hearing about the universal form, which is the description of the prison house, the one-fourth creation. And it's vast, and it's beyond our um, capabilities to wrap our mind around how, how all of this is put together and how it's all functioning. And we see, and we're learning about all the various different demigods that are helping to run it, and they have great power and opulence. And and there's different things that, as as you go along within the material world, the different scriptures that you hear, you know, you can rise up to these various levels within the material universe, within the prison house, and enjoy very nicely for a very, very long time. But it's a very limited enjoyment, and it's still, it's still temporary. It's not eternal. And now we're hearing, so we're, we've just been listening to the, to the universe, material universe, the universal form, which is the prison house for the rebellious souls. And we don't know who we are. We're all in a state of amnesia. It's like if you thought about that there's a, a science fiction movie uh, and you, um, you wake up one day and you don't remember where you came from. You don't remember uh, who you are. You don't remember uh, what this place is. I mean, it's, it's a lot like an animal life. Animals don't know their past. Animals don't know their future. They don't know how, what, how to prepare for the next life. 
Uh, they, all they know is what's in front of them now. That's all they know. And so we woke up in this world. And like, as a matter of fact, I remember my mother. She used to do this thing. This is a, a, like an Irish Catholic tradition uh, where the, she told, you know, because she, my, my grandmother told it to her, she told it to me, that this mark right here on her lip, they, they say that this is where an angel or God himself put his finger right here and says, shh, you're going now. You, you won't remember this, but you will come back. That's what they used to tell us when we were children. So right here, this is so, we've come down here and we're in ignorance. And, um, and uh, we don't remember, and in the human form of life, if we don't utilize it to know how that, that we're not supposed to be here, that, we, that, that we, we can find out where we came from, we can find out what this place is, and we can find out how to prepare for a higher life, for a better life, a really better life, not just going to the heavenly planets, not just becoming the most intelligent person in the universe. Not just becoming the richest person or the most pious person in the universe, the most powerful person in the universe. It's how to um, reestablish our true identity. I don't know what I actually am, and, and I, I, I find that you know, I really want to know who am I. What, 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 is, what am I? Because I have an identity. I have a relationship that exists, and it's now covered over by my um, criminal thoughts. Mm. And whether I, and it, sometimes we don't even realize that they're criminal thoughts, that they're the most, you know, subtle things. You know, the, uh, and you could be thinking like that story of the, the Brahmin and the cobbler. The Brahmin's thinking he's really pukka, following all the Vedic rituals, doing all the proper uh, sacrifices during the day. He's first class, and a cobbler, he's working with maybe even um, the, dead, the skins of a dead animal to make shoes. But, he, but the, when they both asked Narada Muni the same question, it's the cobbler who Narayan says is coming back in their neck at the end of this life, and that the Brahmin has some ways to go. And, the, and Narada Muni was even perplexed, and he said, well, how is this? And he said, well, um, you ask them what you ask them to, uh, to well. If they ask you what uh, I was doing, you tell them that when you uh, when you talked with me, I was stringing a camel through the eye of a needle. And so the Brahmin's going, "This is impossible. How could I not be going back? I've done everything. You you never even went to see him." And so and he said, "Anyway, what was he doing?" How, how, prove to me that you were there. He said, well, when I was there, he was stringing a camel through the eye of a needle. He said, that's ridiculous. How could he do that? So then the cobbler, you know, he's told that he can come back at this life, at the end of this life. And, he, and Nord Muni tells, tells him, would you like to know what the Lord was doing? He said, yes, tell me. He was stringing a camel through the eye of a needle. He goes, oh, my Lord is so wonderful. And he's... Narada Muni says, well, aren't you surprised? And he goes, no. Why should I be? You see these seeds right here? This seed, is, this little seed uh, is encapsulated in, within here as a tree. Not just a tree, but an orchard. Because each tree produces many other seeds. And they grow and grow exponentially, on and on and on. That is not, and so if you can do that, it certainly can do, my Lord can do anything. So Narada Muni understood, because even Narada Muni was kind of puzzled. Well, how is it that, uh, that the Kabbalah is going back? But the Kabbalah had complete, no, no uh, false pride. He had no um, reservations about what the Lord can do and what he can't do. He had complete uh, surrender. He was completely surrendered and free from all all uh, unnecessary qualities of pride. So, anyway, I have an appointment. Uh, so, does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay.
Okay, well, thank you. Well, you give me the moment to think. <laughs> okay, well, so, I, I really have to get into town. So, you have a question? <clears throat> You can you discuss them on the No, I have just a suggestion, an encouragement. <coughs> all nowadays, we need to like encourage each other in our private company to come to class. So talk to each other, you know, because our attendance will go kind of low. It's cold, it's rainy, everybody's doing something. Padma and Niraj is like maxed out with the outside people. They're calling them on different dates. They're gone this morning to that thing. Yeah, we're always outside doing stuff, you know, so. I talk to different people and encourage everyone. That way, we can have more audience. Yeah, yeah well, we, the, we also have the deities and Prabhupada sitting here, so <laughs> that. But yeah, that's and also, well, we we cut down on our, our electric bills if everybody's in the same place. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. in the same place. The, the electric bill uh, for let's see, the day is December the eleventh. So the electric bill from October the 15th to November 15th, which I paid on December the 1st, was $2,100. So what? $2,100. For the whole temple? I guess. Yes, everything. 